Welcome back gamers! We're playing some more hardened scales today, let's go! Mm, basically playing the same list as last time, I made some minor changes. In the main deck I'm playing a Phyrexia's core over the Horizon Canopy, because with 22 lands most of the time you don't sacrifice your lands for card draw. And this helps have some more play against Karn or Collector Oof type effects. We can still sacrifice stuff. Maybe put counters on Ozolith and win that way. In the sideboard I'm playing two dismembers today. That helps against Yogmoth and say Dryads and Asusas maybe. Just general. A bit better against those types of creatures. And rest of the list same as always. Let's see if we can do something today. First match started against Ed93C on the draw. We have two Urza's Sagas, so I'm gonna keep this, one of the, if not the best cards in the deck. And we even have a 1-drop too. Let's see what we play against and then decide if we wanna go with the Saga on turn 1 or use them to grind. Most matchups you actually don't need to grind with Constructs. In, in many matchups, that's just too slow to do anything. Ooh, nice Onslaught Ether Vial, uh, Onslaught Island Ether Vial. Merfolk, I assume. Merfolk's a very aggressive deck, so we try to be fast here. So get an Ozolith going on turn 3. If they tap out, maybe even kill them. Merfolk on the play with Ether Vial. I, I assume it's Merfolk, yeah. So they have the thing where you can tap down a creature and steal its abilities away. But that's less bad than Dress Down because you can't make the creature enter the battlefield without abilities. That being said, I think you want to play Walking Ballista. And see what happens. I mean, they could also have a counter spell. It would be annoying. Yeah. Don't want to attack because they have flash creatures and ether vial activation up. Oh, just this member. Interesting. So you lose 5 and I lose Ballista. And no creature put into play yet. 4 cards in hand. Did mulligan to 6 cards. Okay, second ether vial turn three, that's not really what you want to draw, honestly. Forest. Okay, do we want to do anything insane here? Not really, I think we play a walker. Or oh, even a patchwork, just a patchwork. Hmm. Patrick is not that good here, but we can play two spells next turn. Yeah, let's do that. I'm still not gonna attack with the boss. Opponent is down to three cards, so depending on what they have, we might actually try to do some grinding here. There is a master. Makes sense that they kill our ballista because their creatures are pretty vulnerable to getting pinged to death.
Stacks for two. Divide is in something, maybe. Vodalian Hexcatcher. Two mana, one, one flesh. Merfolk Can count the non creature spells. Sure. It's a new card. Dominaria United. Cool. Uh, actually, I guess playing Grove is better here because there is a red ability here. That being said, do we want to do anything? Or do we actually want to go for a construct? I'm not familiar with Merfolk lists these days. I don't know if they have cards that turn my lands into islands, but at least that one drop, Tide Shaper, probably. So you don't want to give them too much time or they kill you in an unblockable way. I think I do want to cast my spells. Do I? You can always vile in a Merfolk Trickster and take some modular abilities away, for example. That's probably the trickiest thing that could happen. I think I am gonna make a, um, make a construct. Like, they don't have that much pressure. I might regret that, but I don't know. It's a vial on three. What's the three drops in these decks? Is it the card where you draw a card when it attacks? I haven't seen any lists in a while. Svealon? Is that how you say that? Svealon? Svealon? <laughs> when it attacks, draw a card, Merfolk have word. And it is indestructible. As long as you have two or more other Merfolk. Tide Shaper is the card that can make your opponent have an island, but you have to cast it with Kicker. This list doesn't have any like spreading seas. Yeah, two dismembers main, probably playing against a list like this. If you don't token creature, it would enter and it wasn't cast exile it. It's pretty cool. That can uh, make it so. Our constructs, no, it says non token. So it doesn't do much against our deck. It's against blink effects and uh, also ether vial effects. Beginning of combat step. No attacks. I guess Merfolk Trickster can kill Construct Tokens. But I could put counters on it if I wanted to. Yeah, I'm gonna... I guess make another... I don't know. I have a lot of spells in hand, but... These are also not bad here. Just gonna load up one construct with a bunch of counters because then if a trickster also can't kill it. I mean you can do it now. But now it's got two counters.
or three. Oh, here comes a three drop. No, okay. <laughs> Wrong if the file clicked. Network tricks are right. Yeah, you still have to. Oh, it's a four four. Oh, the ah, it's got a double buff. All right, so my plan's not working then, because now I'm in three three, but I keep my counters, so not the worst thing. Yeah, in my head it was gonna be a three three. That's fine. As long as we don't die, we can always threaten a kill with Ravager and Ink Moth. I just don't wanna get blown out by any instant speed effects. So as long as they have Vilus up and cuts in hand, I don't wanna go too aggressive. Tavora. No legendary creatures out. I'd block it with Sabas since I have another one in hand. I'll just take it. I could double block it, but then Construct just dies and... I guess I'd take four. First patchwork trigger. I haven't cast a spell in two turns. I think I do the same thing again. This time it's gonna be even bigger. Do they have some sort of bounce magic in the deck? There used to be a card that bounces tapped creatures. Right, I'll just attack with my 10 10. And is at six, which is not a high life total. If they can get an island walk thing plus violin, more lords, we could die from 13. Two vials at three. Are you sure about that? I mean, okay. Okay. I would honestly never concede, but you you do your opponent. Because, like, I can always make a mistake, right? Seems like a good matchup for us. The welding charges are not amazing. Why well, am I to blow out uh, if they all go all in on an ether veil or something? Safekeeping could be good. At least better than welding char. On the draw, we might not need all the patchworks. So, do we want to bring in more stuff? Another safekeeping could be good. You take out one of these or one of these. That's like my less amazing cards. Nice zero lander. 
Okay, also live in some in some creatures. Sounds good to me. We could get spell pierced, of course. I think I'll keep the patchwork. It's not bad. The ward makes it kinda good. Right. Once again, opponent down to six and turn one vile. Let's see if they can be more aggressive this time. I'd like to see one more land. So I can go patchwork and then double spell and then maybe keep up the safe keepings. I don't know if we should be worried about counter magic. Probably not. They have like spell pierces and forces of negations, I think. Hex catcher. That card is good. Flash lowered with another ability. Which is pretty relevant actually. I can counter my safe keepings. Uh, okay, I guess I'm not taking that bait. If another one of these or any lord probably. I'm gonna play the drum. Oh, really? I think I'll save keep. He already paid the word and everything. And the life. Okay, you want to counter my thing by sacrificing a creature? Or you just want to F6? Well, wait, are you gonna sacrifice two creatures? That's insane. Wow. It was an insane trade for us, right? Three for one and they lost, I guess, three life. We we we, lo we beat two lords with a patchwork and the dismember with a safekeeping. <laughs> That's my dismember. What's up, socks? Yeah, I don't know if I would have done that, but I guess since they have the mutter vaults out, um, that's their way of getting back in from the card at disadvantage. But let's see if it works out. I am out of cards, so that is a thing. Yeah. I guess they really want, after, it was like the sunk cost fallacy. After you already paid the word, do whatever you can to get rid of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know their situation. Maybe it was what they had to do. I'm going to block. I hope my Ballista survives this. And it's gonna get more counters. Okay. There's that card. You can return a tapped creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Okay, I'm going to ping once here. So that dies. I could also, if I wanted to have pink, there's a boss, but that doesn't do that much for me. And I get an Ozolith counter, this dies. Sadly, I miss out on the modeler. The last card, this member.
Wait, what? Why is it not bounced? Oh, it says you may return and they said no. What kind of sense does that make? They must have misclicked or something. Very weird gaming happening here. Do I play that or do I just pump up my ballista? I think it's pump. I don't know what your opponent is on, but I want some. Yeah, weird, weird game actions happening. I mean, they're playing Merfolk, you know? You gotta be in some happy place to play Merfolk. Enchanted Land is an island. Is it still a creature if I animate it? Doesn't matter. I wanna pump my ballista anyway. So they, this is a list still playing Master of the Pearl Trident and Harbinger of the Tides. This one I opened here on MTG. Goldfish isn't playing these, but I guess you can play it pretty. Well, I was actually meaning um, Spreading Seas and Harbinger of the Tides. So now they don't have Island Walk, so... Plus I have a Ballista that's making their life hard. Uh, so if they play an Island Walk Lord, it just dies. Zabaz. Cool. Ah, uh, shit. Wrong, uh, wrong sequencing now. Actually, now I still have four mana for the Ballista. Okay, if I wanted to, I could ping Ballista on Zabaz. Because then it gets two counters back. Probably not worth it though. I'm just gonna start attacking with Ballista. You wanna double block me? Now I could activate... Well, I'm just gonna pay for... Okay, then... <laughs> I don't know, my opponent probably not making the best decisions today. <laughs> but we win the match. I'm super happy about that because life is rough in modern land. <laughs> See you round two. And we're back already. Round two on the play, nice. Versus flash check 7 11. Oh, this is a hand. It's got all the goodies. Bit land light, but in a pinch we can two do a spring leaf drum. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. Um, I'll start with Forest though, since I only have two lands and one of them goes away. And then we have a bit more time to decide if we want to grab a payoff card with Utsu Saga or a mana card. Kind of somehow, Springleaf Drum is basically Moxopal when you get it out for free with Saga. Forest, Birds of Paradise. Ballista, please. Pretty, please. Okay. okay, so now we have to try to be fast. So I'll play Patchwork, I think. Not the fastest play, but then we can go also with if we find land, Sabas, and already have 4 4. Because Birds of Paradise is probably a Yoggmoth deck. And if the Yoggmoth hits the battlefield, I always lose. <laughs> it's so good. Except if we use somehow make it so they have no creatures, but with the undying cards, that's basically impossible. It could also be a different deck, of course, but yeah. I think 100% Yoggmoth now. Yeah. 
This is bad because they can already get Yoggmoth with Eldritch Evolution next turn. Or just hard cast it. And I have no way to prevent that. That's my scales. I mean, that's good, but might be a bit not enough. We'll see. That trick is what, so we could do some stuff with that. We'll see, we'll see. We have an engine going. Opponent has five, six cards. Alright, flash check. What you got? Strangle Root Geist has never looked so intimidating. Like it used to be a card in Mono Green Devotion Aggro, which isn't really that prominent of a deck. But in Yogmoth with Eldritch Evolution and everything, whew, I might want to play that deck sometime. El Eldritch Evolution is one of my favorite cards. While the opponent's tanking, let me show off one of my. One of my other modern decks that I used to play. It's a Sahili combo deck with Eldritch Evolution, Felida Guardian, uh, Renegade Relia at the opponent's back. But this is is more of a fun deck, but it's it's really cool. Okay, they only play out dorks. That must be good for us. Sadly. I mean, actually, we do have access to white mana. Okay, we draw another with the Saga, that's good. Since we can get a Spring Leaf Drum. If we want to. What's the biggest Sabas we can make? Can we make a lethal Flying Sabas? They have Bird, though. Because, say, we get Spring Leaf Drum, use that to give Sabas Flying, then we cast the second one. Then we get. That has two counters, so we can put three on something and two on Ozolith. And we can, if we want to destroy the patchwork, which also adds a bunch of counters. One is it 16. So I think we do want to get Drum here. If only we had a Ballista, we could just wipe the board basically. So, oh, hmm. that flying on the bird is so good here. Because I think we could actually make 16 powers of us. Let us do the math. Um, right now it has two counters. If we play this Sabas, it gets um, plus three, means five plus two counters on Ozolith, which becomes three when we move it, is already eight. The patchwork goes to four. We can kill the patchwork, move the counters on Ozolith, and then four here. With 12. Okay, so I think it's actually not quite there. If we want to give flying, we can't sneak in the Shattered Spire. But we can also just cast the Spire and attack for a bunch. I think that's the best course of action then. I guess they have to block, but they have these Undying cards, so... Our creatures are getting big, which is great. But with two Undying cards, they basically have some sort of infinite loop with Yogmoth, Infinite card draw loop at least, if they find it. Yeah, we definitely could get a creature big enough to kill them, but they can block. Anyway. Hmm. 
Uh, how much modular is this? It's three counters, so it becomes five. Six, actually, with the subas too. Okay, so we just divide this up and they basically have to block at least one creature. Now oh, these are some trigger, this is some replacement effects. Love it. Well, four counters on Ozolith because this Ozolith also works with artifacts. It's a hard and scales effect. I think we attack with this. Uh, let's attack with both. They kind of have to block both creatures. If they didn't have the bird, we could have made just a, a flyer big enough to win the game, but here they go this. So. And the problem is, what they just covered here for one, two, yeah, it's for two. Wall of Roots adds two mana for quad. Does that mean they... Okay, Blood Artist. They, now, if they also have Yawgmoth, I think they already have the infinite loop thing to kill me. So... Do they have two cards? We can still hope they don't have Yawgmoth in hand or Eldritch Evolution or another quad. This deck is so consistent. There's so many ways to find its of cards. Nurturing peatland. Attacks, okay. Good sign. Maybe. You know, they just want to make life easier for them. Get some damage in before doing the loop thing. Yeah, okay, I think we're dead. Not drawing Ballista. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we couldn't kill them. I tried. You can sack the bird, put a counter on strangle root, and then just keeps or just keep sacrificing undying creatures and put a minus one counter on the other one, and blood out his strains us out. So this is exactly why I wanted some dismembers. Grafdigger's Cage is good against all of the Tudor effects from the opponent's deck. His creatures can't enter from libraries. And that might be all I want to board in this matchup. And can the removal do these play Grace the Hunger Tide and what else? Do they have some fatal pushes? Force of Vigor, oh my god, I hate that card. <laughs> so good against us. I just bought out these. We wanna kill them quickly, I think. Even though it's good against removal too, and we have some odds to combo now. Hmm. Not sure. Ah, I was the I was the faster border. Does that mean I did it better? Probably not. <laughs> I don't play again. 
Rosolith scales to to the buzzers. Doesn't really have much payoff, but do we need to find either payoff or sideboard cards in this matchup? This doesn't do anything besides making big the buzz. I don't like it. I still gonna keep it. It's super risky. But we have the whole engine going. And if we draw some ballistas or something, we are in good shape. I'm probably gonna play Ozolith and then Zabaz and then the Force of Vigor are my two good cards and I'm super sad. Ballista, please. Worst driver. Both of Vigor? Okay. That's a good sign. Still need to top deck. This is why most lists only run two Ozoliths or many lists. But I think the card is so good and I like having three. Also, I play against a lot of like prismatic ending decks who take it out for one mana. <laughs> Two undying wolfes. Maybe I should have put in the jailers too. Oh, there's ballista. Insane. If they don't have boss now, we can make a pretty big ballista. Don't do it. Don't do it. Hate force of vigor. It's designed to crush me. Ooh, it hits the battlefield. There's gonna be a lot of counters. No force of vigor. Maybe they just wanna kill the ballista instead. Okay, nice. Guess you can still do it. Just finding the best timing. Looks like it still hasn't happened. Not a chance. At this point, they're just low playing. Just click, just click OK, opponent. The only thing I, I want from you right now. <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> I have a family. No. <laughs> Every time. Ugh. They still could have killed the scales in the auto lift first, but maybe this was the best. <sighs> At least they're down to one card in hand. Yeah, it was a good use of the first for, for sure. Oh, and last card is um, Convoke thingy. Oh, just your mouth, okay. Yep. Uh, pretty dead again. I mean, not straight up dead, but they can draw as many cards as they have life points and kill my creatures too. Well, not 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 really, but they can at least draw as many cards as they want to pay life right now. And as soon as they find blood artist or land plus, I think they have a land drop right. No, they play the land. This is turn 3. The Yorgmoth deck is insane. I mean, scales too, but... Because <laughs> Vigo always beats me. I mean, I could have put it in Trailer, but they just put Vigo dead instead. I have to spend my mana on it. And then the same thing basically happens, right? They kill Trailer instead of Ballista. 
And I don't even get to kill the bird. Okay. Now they can get a blood artist and this Chi Chi again. Ah, brutal. Actually brutal. Because now they have the loop again where instead of them losing life, it's me who loses life. They can do that before I even draw a card. I have not once beaten the Yogmoth deck. I'm not sure if I'm doing it wrong or just never getting a chance. Alright, match three. At least the queue time was short. We're on the play again against Chinja Guy 83. That's a good hand. Might be a hand where we play Saga. What's the saga turn two and make things because we have four lands? I don't know, it's possible I should have mulligan that hand, but you can't. Uh, okay. Hmm. I'll actually I play against Swamp. Um, could be any number of decks. I'm gonna go with... Tough choice, actually. I'll play the Utsu Saga and... Patchwork. My play also live next turn, might make a construct, depends what they do. Okay, is it the Urbok deck or the um, Coffers deck? It looks like it. Scales is a nice draw. So I'm gonna make a Scales and a Ballista here. If it's the Cabal Coffers deck, we just need to kill them as quickly as possible because that deck is so, sort of like Tron. Once it has assembled its, its big mana, you just kind of lose. Yeah, Demolition Field. Looks like it's exactly that deck. Okay. I'm fine with this. Do we have a kill next turn already? Play Ozolith and put a counter on Ballista. I think that dead then. Yeah, I think we got him. What are you doing in Metro State opponent? This adds two counters on Patchwork and then we can add three counters on Ballista. Attack for... I think it's actually exactly 15 damage. 5 plus 5 plus 5. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Next card was Sabas, which has some use here. Problem would have been if they can get rid of both creatures, but I don't think they can. Alright, so this is a matchup where we just want to be fast. They just have big, big payoff cards. Maybe we want some Tamiyo safekeeping instead of... What, the, what do these decks run? So bad at knowing the meta game. What is this deck even called? Mono Black Coffers. It has Khan the Great Creator. That's my least favorite card. Wait, there's a Sheol Dread which, without any other. When did that card come out, man? Amazing. Engineered Explosives, that's annoying. So it's like a Khan sideboard. Last song. Oblivion Stone. Yeah, you wanna be fast in this matchup, Damnation too. Professor Onyx. Is that Liliana? Yeah, it is. Amazing. Okay. Could play Force of Vigor to kill him. Um, like an ensnaring bridge. We need the Welding Charles. 
could put out any of these as always. I'll keep my Phyrexia's core, but I'll play second K once over a Rove, I think. Do I want these safekeepings? It's not good against explosive Sublivian Stone Damnation. Probably not then. I'll play some amount of Force of Vigor, maybe two. Okay, this is not a great hand. Doesn't cast also lift the Shattered Spire. I can use it to force something. Safekeeping gives indestructible. Alright. So it does save a single card against the board wipe. So that could actually be a consideration then. I'm gonna mulligan this. It's it doesn't cast everything and it's also not fast. I mean it has it does have Ravager, Walker, Ink Moth, but that's not really a kill without an Accelerant. Alright, that's better, I guess. We'll put the Char away. Doesn't save stuff against Damnation anyway. This does help against... Wait, how are they even gonna use Engineered Explosives on 2? Two Sagas, which means I'll play one on turn one. They could demolition field it anyway, but... Next Whisper. The one drop on turn two. Mm. I think I'll play Walker and then go Ozolith uptick next turn probably. And it's on three. If I go the other way around, it's only on two. I'm not casting the Ozolith then, but... Okay, they have the field again, sure. Kind of funny that there's a home for Field of Ruin and Demolition Field still. Like the control decks sort of dropped that card. Okay, do I want to uptick or do I want to cast the also lift? Yeah, I think I'll go with uptick. I'll do it right away, I think, because I mean they could have fatal push. Or well, they do have fatal push. But they could also um have something in when I do it in their end step that they can't do right now. So there was thought of the worst outcome, but you never know. Ballista. Hey, who's the Hans Gains player now? This is one of the reasons why it makes me mad that Khan the Great Creator only nerfs your opponent's cards. It's so stupid. And I'll just run out my things here. Could also just play the Ozolith. Hmm. Maybe that's better than play Walker and have... Hey, this is sorcery speed, so... Hmm. Oh, I'll play the Walker. Maybe should I attack first? Yeah, that, that's better because then they might kill the Thopter and then not have the like, two counters to kill this. But if they want to kill this, I don't know. Bit awkward that I couldn't just play this on turn one. And I'm not 100% conf not confident in uh, all of the sequencing here. Like this is still in hand now. Okay, they did kill the Thopter, interesting. So they have 
Termination or something. That uh, would be kind of rough. Termination without me having that card out already. Knight's Whisper, okay, that means no Termination, but you could still... Well, Explosive Son 1 isn't too scary. Do res. Alright, I can always get another. If we draw Ravager, we can win the game. Say, if we wanna say you have no interaction at least. Does this mean a damnation is incoming or some sort of bird wipe? Probably. But that would mean we can win with Inkmoth Nexus, maybe. If the summer can fail push the walker and then wipe the board, it would suck, especially if it's somehow engineered explosive some two or something like that. Cabal coffers would be a lot of mana. No land drop down is instead um invoke card. You sacrifice an enchantment and the planeswalker. We don't have those anyway. So we they draw they're out of mana now. Which creature do we sack? I guess just the patchwork. Can we kill them from 16 next turn? Probably yes. Uh, maybe if I upticked Walker and then sacked it because then this gets really huge. To damage you gain two life. Do we still have the kill from eighteen? So six counters on Ozolith, we can add two with this Ozolith, which makes it eight, and then nine when you put it on a creature. Nine plus five is fourteen. Are we one short? Because we can animate this. Don't tell me we are one short. Ah, if only this wasn't infect damage. Mm. 
I guess we go for it. Actually, we can kill with Ink Moth. I, I almost forgot about that fact. It would have been embarrassing. Like, if we had 9 on the construct, it would be 17 damage. <laughs> All right, I'm glad I figured it out. If anyone watching there was like, please, shouting at the screen, do the infect kill. <laughs> we got it. All right. On to match three. We are back. Round four. On the draw with a one lander. That's pretty good though. I think I'll keep it. We have two draws and then we need to use stirrings to find the land. So hopefully we find the land in the first two draws. On its mulligans to five, so. Ah, well, imagine if I lost with opponent one life there. They gained two life with March of Wretched Sorrow. Does it does invoke this pair gain life? No, that just makes me lose life. Opponents on five with the young pyromancer profile picture. Burn deck, sacred foundry tapped. Land. That is a land. Very good. I'm glad it enters untapped. There's a lot of text on this card, but it, it never says it enters the battlefield tapped. This is burned with no one drop mulligan to fight. Roiling Vortex? If no mana was spent, I should have run out my welding jar. Oh my god. These five damage. That's insane. Generally, Burn is a good matchup, though. Huh. Do, do I play the Welding Char and take 5? That, that's insane, right? I'll play this card out. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, you take 1 damage. So it's a, a small, that's kind of cool actually, small sulfuric vortex. But that 5 damage clause is insane. Lava spike. School. Two cards left. We had 13, not 12. Okay, here's my win condition. That's pretty good. Because Ballista would be the other win condition, but um, I'd have to like hope they don't kill it on their turn. Okay, I think I'll take the land. Then I can ensure to have two mana plus Ink Moth activation next turn. And I'll just play out the walker. Don't think we can die from 12 or... An effective 11. If no mana was spent, this is 5 damage to that player. Crazy. I hope they do something like that again. As in tapping out. Okay, no. Mulligan into 5 with burn is really unfortunate, but Fortunate for us. Okay. Now how do we go about this? I don't really want to lose to just the lightning bolt. I'm at 11. Could just chill. What do we lose to? We go to 10 on our next upkeep. Boros Charm. Boros Charm is still just 8. Boros Charm double bolt would be 10. So we can definitely go for a kill with Ravager, but I kind of lose to Bolt, and I don't want to cast the Zero Mana card. Can also play a Ballista and the Ravager. 
and then sort of have just have to kill up for whenever they tap out. I like that better. Maybe. There should be an auto stack replacement effects option. They they do exactly the same, so the the order doesn't matter here. You got a bolt, forest charm, skull crack. Okay, sure. Well, now you, now I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> I don't know why you do this in response to my ballista. This is what I want to do when I register hardened scales. Only this and nothing else. Alright, nice. Burn is generally a very winnable matchup. Kavans helps. I guess Might can kill an Eidolon and also gain some life. Safekeeping is kinda good too. Do we want forces to kill rolling vortex? But if you <laughs> if you pitch cast, did you take five? Getchy. I'm sure about patchwork. It could be a bit too slow on the draw, but if you play it on turn two and then make it big and they can't kill it, or need to spend two extra mana on it, that's also pretty good actually. Right, let's run it like this. I haven't run into a single prismatic ending deck today. These are like my worst nightmares. Another one lander, but this is really not... I can't even cast my stirrings. We did get there with the other one lander. Okay, this is... I hate this Poseidro. Can I trade that in? It doesn't look like a land. Okay, this, this looks good. I don't know what to put away. I like all my cards. Let's think about sequencing. Playing the Bastion 1 is kind of whack because it just. If they died, you get nothing. But I mean, at least they spend a burn spell on a creature. Yeah, let's ship the stirrings. We're on the draw, we have to um, try to not tumble too much. Goblin Guide. A goblin guide, oh! I can hate this card and, and the fact that it's good. I'm not even like mad. I wouldn't register it and, and I don't like playing. I, I can deal with playing against it. Okay, I'll run out the might then. And play this a buzz later on. We are under pressure. Lind? Alistair. Do it, they are playing Ozolith and passing again, taking two more from, from Goblin Guide. I think I might have to. If they have sh smash, win Badger regardless, I guess. But against that, playing Walker would be better. Now, please let me dry land. Otherwise, this Goblin Guide is too good. 
One mana, two, two haste, plus you see what the opponent draws. Like, how, how is that fair? <laughs> Ability is literally an upside. Ah, stop! <laughs> That's not good. What the hell is that? They go ultra edgy, 100% edgy mode on the basics these days. It's block, declare blocks step. What you doing, opponent? <laughs> Forest charm. Okay, that was funny. Not hitting land is so bad. I don't think we die from 10, but 10 is not a lot. We have four virtual points of life gain on our green cards. Alright, four cards in hand, I'm at 10. I'm definitely blocking this time. Can I get a land, please? Yeah, it doesn't matter, land. One mana, deal six to the opponent, kill a creature, see the next three cards they draw, or four, one of them, and give them one extra draw. <laughs> There is my heart and scales too. Alright, we need to stop the bleeding, so we cast... I want to say Arcbound Ravager, keep up Tamiyo's safekeeping. Or even Ballista. Yeah, let's play the Ballista. I'll attack with the top toss. Still at 10, so when if they have only burn spells in and we just sort of die. Well, we can gain two, maybe that gets him. Lightning bolt targeting ballista. I can play safekeeping, but that loses heart to another um bolt effect. Or any sort of instant speed removal. Do you want to give them credit for that? I'm gonna go with the. Huh. Kinda hard to say. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the high upside line. In Helix. That sucks. At least we can deny the life gain, but... And I mean, we also sort of gain 6 life by them attacking our creatures with spells. So it's sort of a win, actually. We're still at 10 and they have 2 cards now. Plus 2 virtual cards, I guess. One said 14. Is Ravager plus scale the win? Or I guess other way around. Chalice of the Void. What? Are you insane? Who plays Chalice of the Void on one in burn? <laughs> Isn't that insane? I can go for a kill now. But since I can't cast my spells, that's kind of bad against another removal spell. 
So just put counters and attack. Which I think is what I'm gonna do. I mean, I can always haywire my the chalice too, actually. Hmm. We are at 10. What if we just leave the chalice on the field and attack them? They can't cast any one mana spells. Isn't that crazy? I mean, I don't know what's in their hand if we die to triple Boros charm or something. I guess that happens. This is a tough choice. We could just haywire might the chalice, cast as a buzz and go for a win. We go to 12 then. It kind of loses to smash to smithereens or something like that. Huh. I don't know how to play this. I think I'm gonna go slow. I, I think this chalice is is crazy. <laughs> Why would you have that in your? I mean, they have Skewer the Critics, Roiling Vortex, Boros Charm, Lightning Helix, but they also have Goblin Guide, Lightning Bolt, probably Swift Spear. All this terror. I should have sacked one more, maybe, so the Ballista is straight up lethal. I'm just gonna pass. If they try to do something sneaky, I can still go for a win. Okay, now you had, now you had two! <laughs> now you had two opponent! <laughs> Not the... Uh, I mean, mistakes happen, you know. They, they were so dead anyway, but still, that's hilarious. I didn't go for a win because they were still at one more than the funniest they could do. Alright. Finally, writing a positive record again. That's what happens when I don't run into the white decks, the exile decks I want to run for. Fifth match on the draw versus Delta Sanku. Another good matchup, please. Oh, another one, Linda. I would be kind of sweet with double patchwork, double welding char, but I'm gonna malign this. I'm playing as Kahira. Each creature in your deck is a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, beast. That can mean any number of things. Either it's an actual elemental deck, or it's a control deck that doesn't run many creatures besides solitudes. So, one thing is for certain that I cast Solitudes and I'm gonna be sad. <laughs> On six with one lender with stirrings, I guess I'll keep that. Just gonna go off my hunch and say Welding Char is not good in the Kahira matchup. Opponents also on six. Rock Ring Triome. 
So probably some sort of omnath deck. Uh, let's play the Yozolith. In the hopes of drawing a land and dropping creatures. We can still go stirrings into the bus. Forest Ren and Zeke's. These decks are rough matchups always. Because they have Leyline bindings and all of that exile crap. And what do I have? Three walkers? <laughs> it's kinda of, kinda of sucks. Should they not have played Pisabas? It's possible. Uh, Reason Reef. Can I get a Ballista? That's so awesome. Really, really cool card. With Reason Reef out and us not having an option to remove it. These things are not looking amazing. The very the time rebeller. <sighs> no. Uh, yeah, not much we can do here. We had a land we could at least make two patchworks. Both two twos. Opponent riding that Ren and Six train. This card's awesome. Om Nef. Just taking the very uh, Groundhog Day type situation. But opponents drawing cards and making four fours. Uh, this is so bad. Turn five. We have two two twos on the battlefield. Opponent with seven cards in hand over there. Should I just press concede or do we try to make them slip up? Always possible, right? At least they have to pay the ward now. I mean, Ink Moth is a way to win the game, but one Solitude is just like lights out for that plan. Wish I could just avoid these Solitude decks one time. Solitude and Teferi. But okay. This this game was really unfortunate too. Just 
playing to my odds here, which is sort of to win with the Ink Moth. But I'm pretty sure that's not gonna work. But I'm not dead yet. And it's always possible. And well, now I'm dead. Did they have a fetch land out? Well, opponents playing very powerful magic that can be during gathering cards. Yeah, not much we could have done in this game, but that's how it sometimes goes. You can hear us out too. Just attack me, it's over. You don't have to do all of these things. Who oh, gives vigilance? Sick. Down to minus one from the first strike damage. Mr. Welding chose a pretty bad in this matchup. Quickly dismembers. Yeah, this dismembers are actually okay. They are an elemental deck. Killing a Risen Reef or an Omnath could work, could do some stuff. I mean, both of those draw cards on entering, which is annoying. I guess I'll play one just because I have a slot. Don't need any of the other cards, really. Oh, why is such a weird card? You only play it for the trigger, not really for ever casting it. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny how it says you won the die roll. I'm pretty sure we didn't. We just lost game one. Yeah. Oh my god, what is it with all the one lenders? Is 22 lands not enough? Ugh. Oh my god. This is even worse. Ugh, sometimes, I mean, we have the drum, but we can't play a creature. Ugh. What is going on? At this point, we have to pray. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this was just a very unlucky match. It's not quite over, but we're like less than 5% to do anything in this game. Mm -hmm. That's how that goes. Starting is a good draw, I guess. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Okay, kick me while I'm down. Yo, they play Oath of Nyssa. Like, that's awesome. I always call this card the Green Ponder. And you can bounce it with Teferi to draw extra cards. It's it's really cool. I don't matter here. I don't wanna <laughs> end my suffering, please. Okay. Still a 3-2 record. Can't really complain, but right, let's see what's in the chest. Five play points. Purity, elemental incarnation from a lower win. Wow, those cards sucked. True believer, you have shrouded. Wow, okay. 
a terrible chest. I, uh, that was fun. See you next. Um, thanks for watching and see you next league.